she said, and I quote, this ain't a country album. This is a Beyonce album. Cowboy Carter is officially out in the world, y'all. Let's listen. Hey everybody, welcome back to Tea with Brie. If you're new here, an extra special welcome. This is a place where we talk about pop culture, pop girlies, all the pop things. Today, the tea is a honey vanilla chamomile because we're talking about our queen bee, our honey bee. Cowboy Carter is officially out in the world. You guys, I cannot tell you how stoked I am to listen to this album. Uh, before we get into it, a reminder that there are timestamps in the description. So there's a lot of songs on this album. I see that it runs like an hour and 20 minutes. So skip around to your favorites. But before we get into officially listening and reacting to the album, I am gonna make a couple predictions, just see how wrong I turn out to be. See if I have to cancel myself for these, but I'm looking at the track list right now. And I feel like Joe, lean is gonna be fun i don't know if it's gonna be a hundred percent complete slay but i think it's gonna be something different a cover of it that's a little bit you know spicier in some way and i'm excited and i'm looking forward to it i feel like the miley collab is gonna be a 100 percent slay i love seeing miley finally kind of like get her flowers this year at the grammys literally and figuratively for the song so i'm really looking forward to that one i'm gonna say that one's a guarantee 100 percent slay I'm reading the track list again and it's like, I'm reading the word spaghetti and I'm seeing the picture that she posted. I just feel like spaghetti is going to go all the way off. Like go where? I'm not sure. I don't know the direction, but I just feel like it's going to pop all the way off. Correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> In a couple minutes, we'll figure it out. In terms of the songs that are going to break us, I am going to call Amen. The last song on the album, Amen. I mean, Beyonce girl, take me to church. I'm ready to go. I've been baptized. I feel like daughter is also going to. I just feel like water works, you know? I feel things happening. And 16 Carriages, small aside, was... I love Texas Hold'em, but 16 Carriages like did something to me emotionally. I feel like 16 Carriages was written for the eldest daughters, the eldest siblings who are just like taking care of the family and like putting the weight of everybody's shit on their shoulders. What's in right with my dreams away? <sighs> I am nervous for the more emotional songs on the record because I feel like I, am I gonna cry? Like I, maybe. It's a prediction though, so I might as well predict that. Yeah, I, I predict that my t my eyes will well up. I can't fully cry. Sociopath vibes. But the eyes are gonna well, prediction. And as far as the sleeper hits, I mean, it's a Beyonce album. Like, let's be for real. There's not gonna be like sleeper hits, but the ones I'm predicting that you might not necessarily think by reading the track list would be Levi's Jeans featuring Post Malone. I picked Levi's before I even saw that Post was on the song. So not sure what a Beyonce Post Malone collab sounds like. I'm dying to know, but I feel like that's gonna be a sleeper good one. I also feel like Sweet Honey Buckin. I'm calling it. It's like the second to last song on the album, a little bit un assuming i mean i love the title but i feel like that one is gonna be like one of those hits that like builds and like you listen to it and the more you listen to it the better it gets i mean that's kind of a lot of songs but you guys know what i mean so without further ado let's get cozy let's get comfortable and let's press play on the first song i'm ready my plans for this weekend are Beyonce and then recovering from Beyonce Beyonce is a full weekend event all right everyone we're cozy the album is out the tea is in hand Emotionally, we're not prepared, but physically, we must go on. The show must go on. Let's do this. Track one, American Requiem. Ooh, for things to stay the same, they have to change again. Yes, queen. The melodies though. The melodies though. Shit. Take me to church, bro. Take me to church. Ooh, I like how she says amen because the last track is amen. While I sing my song. Oof. The deep register. The deep register, damn, damn. I don't know how I expected this album to begin, but this is this is different than I expected, but I couldn't really expect anything. It's just, it is what it is and it's beautiful. Uh, 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 I like this run. Let me make myself 
Girl, make yourself clear. And the rejection team said I wasn't country enough. Said I wouldn't saddle up. <laughs> said I wouldn't saddle up. This is obviously when um, she wasn't country enough for, you know, country radio, country music. And she's like, said I wouldn't saddle up, but guess what, bitches? She stay saddled. If that ain't country, tell me what it is. <laughs> I am the one that cleans me up my fuck. <laughs> what? Literally, what? My computer sounds like it's about to fly away, but we're just gonna have to go with it. That was really beautiful. I feel like as far as like an intro to this era, her country era, this country album, like that, to me, that's, that stands up. I love how she was like, first I spoke to country, then it wasn't country enough, said I wouldn't saddle up. She is truly coming for every single genre. I don't care who you are and I don't care where you are. She's going to find you. She's going to snatch your words, snatch your souls. It's so impressive to me. It's like a soft intro. It also almost reminds me of like a, a movie, like an intro to a movie. Like you have like the landscape and the horses and like the Wild West kind of vibe. And you have this song with the beautiful melodies and it's just like, painting a very visual picture in my head, which is what I think she's so good at. Also, I love that the last word is amen. It's this prayer, it's also a statement, and the last song on the album, you know, is also amen. I feel like what I appreciate about Beyonce is that she orders her tracks in like a very specific way. And yeah, it's not, she's not like playing games about that. Like there's a story that she's trying to tell and a point that she wants to get across and she's going to do it and build the track list very specifically. Some artists, I feel like they're just throwing shit in there. They're like, here's the first one, here's the last one. Spaghetti for the rest. <laughs> Spaghetti, don't make me. Track two, Blackbird. I am wondering if this is gonna be a straight cover of the Paul McCartney song or if there's gonna be a little something, you know, a little something special in there. So let's see what she's got for us. Blackbird singing in the dead of night. She's going straight cover, but damn, does her voice sound good. Drop the bass. Just kidding. Now these harmonies, these harmonies are stunning. We've got a lot of people on this track. We've got Raina Roberts, Tierra Kedney, Britney Spencer, Tanner Adele, Queens. In the dead of night, oh. take these broken wings and the Wow, that sounds exquisite. Fly, 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 fly. I also really enjoyed the stripped down instrumentation. I know that's how the song originally is, and I wasn't sure if she was gonna like mix that up or not, but I really appreciate the the stripped down instrumentation just because compared to the last album, like this, people were like, where's the Beyonce vocalist? Where's the vocalist at? Be She's, she never left. It's a cover, but it's stunning. It's beautiful. It's crisp, it's clean, it's sparse back. It's what I fell in love with when I first listened to Beyonce is like her stunning vocal range and also the emotion that she puts behind um, the lyrics. So it's a beautiful cover, what can I say? Track three is technically 16 carriages. We've already listened to that, we already love it. As I said, it's for the eldest daughters. This is for my eldest siblings who are out there hustling for their families, who are out there just like, experiencing the emotions of their parents and the emotions of their siblings and trying to hold it all together. Shit, I'm about to, about to get teary I just think about it. But we're not gonna listen to that one. So we're gonna go to track number four, which is Protector featuring Rummy Carter. Let's do it. Mom, can I meet you? Don't worry, bye, please. I said, Mom, can I hear the lullaby, please? That's beautiful. I wonder if that's her daughter. <laughs> To me, that like heavy, that really nice guitar run is 
to me very country and maybe not like as twangy as some of the biggest hits on country radio but that like very simple instrumental with the guitar harkens back to like original country music where I mean people were playing on banjos people were playing on fiddles like it was more simple and parsed back so I see you Queen. yeah oh the way she draws that out though that's hot. Me. Okay, am I crazy here? When I'm listening to this song, I'm feeling front porch, summer, Midwestern South area, the crickets are out, the fireflies are chirping, and you're just sitting with your friends just rocking back and forth on a little rocking chair on the porch. Am I crazy here or is this the visual? Even though I know someday you're gonna shine on your own. Oh damn. I bet if you got kids that hits real hard. I ain't got no kids, so I can't relate, but <laughs> just kidding. Beautiful. Again, it's soft, it's pared back, it's instrumentally simple, but the vocals again are doing the most. And the harmonies with these other artists are just I mean, a thousand chef's kiss. So far, it is like a very emotional start to the album because again, we didn't listen to 16 characters, but we all heard it, we all love it. It's simple, you know, it's, I mean, not simple, but it's like a slower, I feel like the emotions are building, like the scene is being set. All right, so track five is My Rose, and this one is only 53 seconds long. So I don't know if it's gonna be like a little interlude, a little like, We'll see, we'll see. What, what's How going? many times have you let yourself get you down? Let yourself get you down. La, 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 oh, yes. La, 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 la. Yes. To me, my rose is really beautiful, honestly. I wish it was longer, but it really like nails down the point when she said, This is this ain't a country album, this is a Beyonce album. This is a Beyonce album, like the vocal runs, the kind of emotional undertone of the lyrics, the amazing harmonies on harmonies on harmonies for days, like I'm into it. Again, it is like a slower build and we have one more song and then Texas Hold'em, which we know is like more upbeat and more fast, but all of them so far have been instrumentally very simple. Vocals are absolutely shining, absolutely stunning, absolutely slaying. My favorite so far, let's listen to the next track, which is Smoke Hour, track six, Willie Nelson, featuring Willie Nelson. This is another 50 second song by interlude situation moment. Let's listen to this one and then I'll see which one my favorite is so far. Welcome to the Smoke Hour on KNTRY Radio, Texas. You know my name, no need to know yours. Yourself as you was, thank you. <laughs> okay, so I feel like that's just kind of like a fun little let's make a country album and like bring Willie Nelson into it. Honestly, guys, I'm sorry. I don't know Willie Nelson well enough to know if that is like a snippet of something or if he did that only for this album. Like, I don't know, but I'm into it. Like, I like the storytelling of this album already. Like, they're short little bits. She's not afraid to make a long song and she's not afraid to add in a 50 second little interlude moment and she's also not afraid to add some commercial stuff and Willie Nelson in there. What is even going on? Favorite song so far? Honestly, it's crazy, but I really, my rose like did something to me. All those la 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 la. Like I'm gonna have to go back and listen to that one again at the end. I'm bummed it's only 50 seconds, but also like who's to say how long a song can be? Beyonce can make every song one second. Do you know what I mean? She could do it. Okay, so track seven is Texas Hold'em. We've already heard it, we already love it. So we're gonna go to track eight, which is Bodyguard. Two, three, four. Ooh. Yeah, already, already obsessed, already obsessed. Bummed I didn't call this one, but. So sweet. <laughs> I'm loving this song, I'm obsessed with this song, and I'm in love, and I'm obsessed. As a former lifeguard, I fully endorse this. 
Um, excuse me, bodyguard what? Who gave you the right? Absolutely, who gave you the right? Okay, bodyguard is definitely my favorite song so far. I'm so enjoying the pace of these songs. Like, they don't feel so rushed and it just feels refreshing. Like, I feel like the albums that have been coming out recently, the artists I've been listening to, I mean, I'm thinking of Tate McRae's specifically, but it was like, the songs were so short and there was no pauses. There was no like room to let the music breathe. It was just like high octane, like craziness the whole time. And I liked that album, but when all of them kind of are starting to hearken to that and kind of starting to play to this like shorter TikTok attention span audience, like, I don't, I don't know. I want something different. And I love that she's letting the music breathe. She's letting each song have their flowers. She's letting each song have its moment. Each vocal run can go up and go down and there can be like just absolute slage guitar solos in the middle. Yes, Beyond. Like this is a breath of fresh air to me and I loved it. And up next we have Dolly P featuring not Dolly P, just Beyonce. But it is a 22 second moment. Let's see what we have in store. Oh. Oh, yes. It's Dolly P. You know that hussy? Oh my god! A little shout out from the absolute queen of country to the now reigning queen of country. I love Dolly Parton. She's done so much for children's literacy. Look that shit up. Don't mess with Dolly, for real. Every different color, but it hurts just the same. Oh, Becky with a good hair and Jolene. My two queens, I'm so excited. I I want to see. It does seem like this is going to be a more, perhaps, given the background beat that I was just hearing, a more straightforward cover, but I'm pumped to find out. So let's go into it. Track number 10, Jolene. Oh, a little bit different stuff. Who's playing guitar on this album? I'm sure it's multiple people, but for real, they are, they're freaking killing it. Take me to church. You. Take me to church, mama. Don't come for my man. Don't take the chance because you think you can. Honestly, if you would have told me in the middle of COVID that I was going to get a Beyonce Jolene cover in the year of our Lord 2024, I probably would have looked at that whole situation differently. I would have thought everything heals. Everything must be healing for us to get this in 2024. It really would have got me through. So honestly, grateful to be here in this moment. Just grateful. To the Creole banjo bitch from Louisiana. Is she still a Creole banjo bitch? <laughs> okay. I thought she might put a little bit of sauce in it and I'm pretty sure that was not in the original. Yes, mama. Don't try me. There's a thousand girls in those valleys, oh. highs and lows and everything. <gasps> the way she sang crossed though. Crossed though. Yeah, my man crossed those. I mean, that was incredible. I'm probably gonna have to go back and play that again. So. Me and my man crossed those valleys, highs and lows and everything between. Full body chills, full body chills. I love the incorporation of the, the male um like choir voices in the back like that is beautiful that's a vibe that's creative that's how you do music people yeah that was beautiful that was beautiful what can i say um i was really wondering as i said like if she was going to stick with the her normal like the normal lyrics to the song or she's going to jazz it up a bit and she did jazz it up a bit but it was very true to the original and i absolutely loved the little dolly parton one queen game recognized game queen recognized queen to another i really loved that um again i'm gonna be playing that track all the time i love miley cyrus's cover of jolene if you haven't listened to it you should and this beyonce and miley's covers are my favorite covers and dolly's is obviously unbeatable as the original but these girls are amazing okay track Number 11 is Daughter. Daughter was one I had pegged to be very emotional, so I don't have my tissues nearby, but maybe I'm gonna grab my emotional support tea because I'm nervous for this one, guys. Blood stains on my custom couture. Bathroom attendant, let me. 
blood stains. Is this about to be a murder mystery song? Ooh, look what you made me do. <laughs> Love the look what you made me do callback. Shout out Taylor Swift. Um, yeah, this is definitely a different vibe than I thought. I thought this was going to be very emotional, very blue ivy vibes. And it's getting murder. It's getting desperado. So... Like it, loving the instrumentation. Though. Colder than Titanic water. Oh, oh shit. Okay, lyrics. Colder than Titanic water. Damn, girl. You be killing. You be killing Leo DiCaprio. In this economy, I mean, maybe. Before he is dead. Okay, so I should know more about this, but I believe Beyonce and her father have a very bad relationship. I think he passed away. I'm not sure. Y'all, I love Beyonce, but... I don't know as much about her family history as I should. Obviously, I know about Solange. Obviously, I know about her mama. But her dad, I cannot remember. Please enlighten me below. So maybe this is a song from her perspective as the daughter. Um, which is giving that to me. It's giving, like, spiteful, angry daughter queen. Okay, girl. Just to, for everyone who wanted the Beyonce vocals. I think you're going to enjoy this album. Jesus. Okay, so Daughter. Daughter really has me all over the place. I love the, again, really simple guitar picking on loop. I loved the, I believe it was a town little pre-chorus or bridge. That was amazing. I feel like I need to listen to this one multiple times. I feel like the longer I sit with it, the more the meaning will hit me, but it definitely wasn't what I thought. It wasn't that like slow, emotional kind of ballad situation. So check one for being wrong. <laughs> let's keep it going. Oh, let's definitely keep it going because next we have Spaghetti with Shibuzi and Linda Martell. So again, this was my prediction of being a little off the cuff, not off the cuff, this was gonna be a little bit out there, a little bit different, a little bit wild, a little bit crazy. It's called spaghetti, so honestly, it could be anything, but let's get into it. Genres are a funny little concept, aren't they? Genres are a funny little concept? Is that what you just said? Yes, they are. That Beyonce Virgo shit. In theory, they have a simple definition that's easy to understand. Okay, y'all, so this is Linda Martell. Oh, I just feel that we're about to get into something. I feel we're about to get into something. Strap in, everybody. Please keep your arms and legs inside the ride at all times. Right, right. I mean, this is giving act one to me. They call me the captain, the catwalk assassin, but they know what's- Oh, I mean, hell yeah. Hell yes. I feel angry in my heart. I need to like punch something, I need to fight someone. I don't know where this is going. But I ain't even trying to kick it. Country, country, petty, petty. I mean, she can spit bars. Lest anyone forget with all the Italian bridges that she's singing, she can also spit absolute bars. Don't forget. the same to me, plain Jane spaghetti. No sauce, no plain sauce. Plain Jane spaghetti, no sauce. So it's a diss track. Respect. Oh, I hear Shibuzi. Okay, wow. Spaghetti. Okay, one prediction. Right. One wrong, one right. Spaghetti was definitely something different. It is a complete departure from everything we've heard so far in the album, but it's still very Beyonce. Who's to say what country is and what country isn't, people? But... I loved the uh, the last part with Shibuzi and Beyonce. That to me was chef's kiss. I would love to see them on like 50 more tracks. Personally, are you with me or are you not? Argue in the comments. Oh, 13 Alligator Tears. I probably should have picked this one for something wild as well. I feel like this one might also go hard, but I feel like I can already hear everybody laughing at me who's listened to the album like, no bitch, it doesn't, but. I said what I said, 13 alligator tears. Okay, 
already a visual is established in my mind. I might be totally, totally off base with these visuals, but in my mind, it's like I'm in an old like car, an old Oldsmobile vibe. I'm in like your hometown. If your hometown is in the South or the Midwest, there's corn, there's high humidity, the AC is broken, the windows are down, and you're just driving around reminiscent and thinking like, I got to get out of here, but also I kind of appreciate the things I learned here that made me who I am. Am I off base, ladies? And Love that lyric. You say stop the river from running. I'll build a dam or two. Also, honestly, y'all, this album got me feeling dumb as hell because I feel like there's so many things that I'm missing. I feel like there's so many references, so much culture, so much history that I'm just missing. And I love when artists are able to do that and embed songs with like so many different things and layers. But honestly, I feel like I'm missing shit. Am I dumb as hell or is anyone? Can people please enlighten me? You know I'm about to go on Reddit after this, so I might not need the enlightening, but I feel like Alligator Tears is very much in line with the vibe of the rest of the album. Spaghetti was like, okay, where are we going? And then Alligator Tears is like, okay, we're going back on track. It wasn't, it didn't arouse specific emotions in me, but more general emotions of like, She's a lady and she loves her man and she's ma cha making a lot of changes for him, but maybe too many, maybe too many changes because she is Beyonce. Like how much she really need to be changing for people. I would say they should change for you. That's just one girl's opinion. Okay. Track number 14, Smoke Hour 2. I'm guessing all the double I's or L's is just two for her act two album. But girl, again, I feel like I'm missing shit. This is another 30 second interlude with Willie Nelson. Up next on the Smoke Hour is Just for Fun by Beyonce. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Willie Nelson. I'm really liking these interludes. It's like really helping me get embedded in the world I feel like she's creating. I feel like with her albums as of late, they've all been like these little independent worlds where she just does such a good job with the storytelling aspect of it. And I would love to see this girl direct a movie, honestly, because I feel like so much thought goes into every single detail. I'm like, first of all, how? It's like, well, why and how and what and where and how, again. But I feel like she would be an amazing director because she pays attention to everything. I feel like she would have like every single scene planned out, which I know many directors do, but I feel like hers would be planned out to a different level of detail. Anyway, okay, so now we're just for fun with Beyonce and Lily Jones. I have no predictions about this song. Let's just have fun. Everywhere I go, they know my I like this quieter intro. It feels like it's building towards something. So I uh, laugh and I lie and the coyotes cry and the time moves quickly and so do I, so do I. Time moves quickly and so do I. Like that lyric. Fast asleep tonight and I'll just I appreciate the addition of like extra instrumentation here at this chorus part. It's a good food. Like you can really hear all the different layers. Um, really good production. Born in the dark. I'm going down south. Just hey, Willie Jones. Born I am the man I know. Yeah, I love how this is just building with all these harmonies to like a choir kind of situation. It's super beautiful, and with the instrumentation and the choir on top of it, it's just. Sonic perfection, people. Okay, yes. Yes, yes, and yes. I have been so enjoying all the collaborations, all the features on this album. It's so fun to have like these country legends like Willie and Dolly, and then to have these absolutely beautiful voices um, that she had on Blackbird to have Linda Martell, I mean, girl, gals and gals, I mean. And speaking of features and collaborations, we have Beyonce and Miley next. I'm wondering how much Miley will be featured. So far, the features have been a little bit more sparse in the actual track. So I'm wondering if this will be more 50-50 or if this will be more like Miley just sings 
part of the chorus and you're doing some harmonies. So interested to know, but this was one of my sleighs. So I'm hoping this is a sleigh, y'all. I'm nervous. I mean, yeah, it's a sleigh. Like, I don't know. No jump in the gun, but we're both still young. Starting off with Miley. Okay, girl. This, her voice sounds amazing. I mean, again, Miley's in her truest, like, I feel like full circle era. So to see them both on this kind of a track is just, I just love it. Pop music as a pop girly, I love the pill. Oh, they sound so good together. I thought of a lot of different Beyonce collaborations that I would personally adore, but Beyonce and Mally is not one that really had occurred to me, and I'm obsessed. Am, am I wrong here? I'm obsessed. Smoke out the window, flying out of your own. That was beautiful, that smoke out the window. That was beautiful. I, I'll be the backseat, baby, driving you crazy. Been a while since I had been trapped a fool. this is very 50 50 it's very much equal parts Beyonce and Mally and I'm but they're both shining but they're also both collaborating in a way that is truly slimy so damn it I don't know what you're doing tonight but I The vocals to that, people. The vocals to that. Holy shit. Wow. A moment of silence for all the dead and dying singers that she just slayed with that. Yeah. Wow, okay. That was beautiful, stunning cataclysmically amazing i it's hard to find the words i love that it's like a ride or die song like i'll be your shotgun rider like we're it's like a bestie song and that could have easily just been some dude and then the context of the lyrics is just romantic but i love the fact that it's like a bestie song it's like miley and beyonce like are they friends in real life like am i missing something when was this recorded I'm guessing the recordings of this took place many years you know, ago and things have just been waiting. So I don't know when they recorded this, but this that would be interesting to know because like, what was going on during that time? I don't know. I don't know. I need more context people, but a beautiful song, absolutely one of my favorites so far. So guess I was right on two predictions. Two for Brie versus one not for me. She got me on one. Oh, speaking of predictions, up next we have track 17 with Levi's Jeans featuring Post Malone. I predict this, I mean, Post Malone has been more in his acoustic guitar vibe era anyway. So this one I'm excited about. Dare I say it might be more, a little faster pace. I can't say for sure. Let's just listen to it. I better be paying you like a couple million for this kind of endorsement. Period. Come be a sexy little thing. Never did I think I would hear Beyonce referring to Post Malone as a sexy little thing. And I know it's not literal, but baby girls, miracles do happen. y'all their voices blend really well together in a way that i absolutely would not have expected in a million years color me shocked 
Venom on, venom on, denim on, denim. Yeah, bitch. Okay, I just, I just need a moment right here. I just need a moment at this point in the record track 17. Who produced this? I should already know that. And I'm embarrassed that I don't. However, they have done an amazing job because I feel like in a lot of pop albums, when you're balancing a more simplistic instrumental, you know, instrumentals, layers, and then you have one vocalist and then you have another vocalist and then you're trying to blend their voices beautifully together but not lose the, you know, the backing track. It's like, they did, it's like a science, people. It's not easy to do. I find myself wishing that certain parts of the voice were pulled forward at different times, but whoever is mixing this is doing such a good job. Everything is at the volume that I want it to be. Everything is standing out, but not overwhelming me. That's not making any sense, bitch. I know me to me, but you get the vibe or you don't get the vibe. Girl, I wish I was Okay, controversial opinion. Controversial opinion coming at you. I think I liked Levi's jeans more than I liked The Most Wanted with Miley. Um, just listening to them back to back, I was like, I love them both. Obviously, you know that you just saw my reaction to the other one, but there's something about Levi's jeans and something about the way Post and Beyonce sound together that is really something unexpected and beautiful. It's definitely one of my favorites. I don't, I, I can't remember which ones are all my favorites at this point. It's like we're on track 17. I don't even know where I am right now. It's late at night, y'all. Okay, so track number 18, Flamenco. My mind has been telling me to settle right all down. Her mind's been telling her to saddle, saddle right on down, and her mind was mother effing right. Thank you, mind. For the 900th time, I'm a broken record at this point, but the vocals, people. Okay? Next is, next up we got track number 19, The Linda Martell Show. This is another 28 second little interlude moment. This particular tune stretches across a range of genres, and that's what makes it a unique listening experience. Yes, indeed. It's called Yaya. Okay, I really enjoy the little, the little intros to the songs. Like, this is what music was meant to be. This is how shit was meant to be. I want intros on intros on intros. I want guests and collabs right, left, and center. It just really adds something to the album, to the experience, you know, when you're getting, each song is treated like its own special thing. Like, I'm just, I'm just, whatever, girl, just shut up and track 20, yeah, yeah. God, this video is about to be 50 hours long in time. Well, she said this was going to be Hello? a mix of genres, so I'm excited, I'm enticed, I'm scared, I'm excited, and I'm scared. We snap in. Pretty please. I'm already loving this. I mean, we snap, I'm... Pff. To the Beyonce yeah. Cowboy yeah. Potter Act 2. <laughs> okay, am I crazy? There's something about this that... I wish it was the first song on the album. Am I off base here? Tell me, y'all, put me in my place if I am, but I haven't even heard, the, I haven't even heard the song, so I can't even say shit, but there's something about it where I'm like, this should be, there's something that feels intro-ish to me. We're getting taken to church, y'all. We're getting taken to church. We're getting taken to church. Okay. That's a little 
little Beach Boy sample I detect. I think I'm right on that. Is that Beyonce singing that? That was a deep, that was a deep register. Respect. Yeah, that's her. Okay, y'all, that was wild. That was wild. I loved that. Again, could it be an intro? I'm not saying she's wrong with the intro she picked, but I would have loved that even as like a track two situation a little bit earlier on because I feel like it is kind of what she's doing with the album. She's taking kind of a lot of different genres. I mean, we just listened to Flamenco and she's getting Post Malone on tracks. Like she's meshing a lot of things together and I really like how this song kind of is a bigger representation of the album and it's also so fun and it's also lyrically stunning and I'm running out of praise like I'm running out of words to even say about her at this point I'm just running I mean we still have like god only knows like six more seven more tracks up next we got oh Louisiana track 21 this is 52 seconds long so not really sure what we're in for <laughs> Okay, again, there was something I'm missing there. Like there's some references, there's some history there that I'm completely missing. I feel like a big dumb beat, okay? I'll research it after this again. But that's probably the first one where I didn't really love the vocals. I'm not really sure what it was adding. And that's the first song I've said that. And this is a long ass album. So if I'm having to cut one track so far, it's Oh Louisiana. I'm so sorry. If there's some deeply amazing historical meaning there that's personal to her or to the history of the genre again maybe we have to keep it but if i have to just go off my gut i'm cutting that one initially up next we got 22 desert eagle this is a minute long so we could be in for anything y'all we got a little eagle a little eagle scream in the beginning there love a little animal representation this feels like like some some funk music. This is like some South American funk right here. I do, I'm loving how the songs just run immediately into each other. I think those are the kind of albums that are more storytelling, that just give you a better visual, that the artist can just like build a better visual in your mind of like, the story they're trying to take you on. Desert Eagle, I loved the kind of funk back background and instrumentation. That one was a little lyrically, like the to me the instrumentation, the funkiness of it and the lyrics and the melody of it didn't really match up. Like it wasn't a perfect match for me. So, Oh Louisiana and Desert Eagle. Not it for me y'all. No disrespect if those are your favorite songs, but I'm excited for River Dance. This is a long girl. She's four minutes. When I think of River Dance, I think of Irish dancing. I think of the River Dance, which my Irish grandma used to make us watch all the time. Those men in tights were on one for real. So I'm wondering what vibe this is gonna be. Dance. happening right now but I think I like it oh hell yeah hell yeah bounce on the shit no hand bounce on the shit no hand if I but we must make amends arrest me and read me my rights I put dance bounce on the shit no hands okay so to me this is an example of where the instrumentation in the background is very unique and the lyrics and I mean the melody of it is also very different but they go together. In Desert Eagle it felt a little off to me, let me know what you think, but in River Dance it's like you still have very different instrumentation and melody but they are synchronously swimming in the same river. 
Y'all, it's been a long night. I don't know what I'm saying anymore, but if you know, you know. I can just imagine being at like a little outdoor family barbecue and every, I mean, it's late at night and this song is just, everyone's tearing it up. Everyone's tearing it. Everyone's bouncing on that shit. No hands. Okay, that I know is not gonna be for everyone and I think it's gonna be a more divisive song and I think probably, I don't know, I think it's gonna be equal of people that love it and people that don't really vibe with it. Definitely, it's for me though. I mean, I love the simplicity of the lyrics but I love the complexity of the guitar in the background and I love, it's just like this perfect beat that you just wanna get up and move. You just wanna get up and dance as the woman said, listen to her. Okay, up next, we got Two Hands to Heaven. This is a five minute, 41 song, 41 seconds. This might be the longest song on the album. I'm looking forward to it. Part of this just sounds like a Maggie Rogers song. Two hands Ooh, I like how that just kind of like picked up there on the purple colored milk sugar cane. I really love this song. It feels almost like a dreamscape, you know? Like you're, you're sleeping, you're in the hammock, you're in that like really weird place between like asleep and awake where you're kind of dreaming but kind of still with it. And she even says, slip into my dreams every night, be the good guy. So I feel like I love it when the lyrics are able to match up with like a melody that just further drives the point home and this is doing it for me. I'm digging the complexity of this song. I feel like she switched up the speed a couple times and added more harmonies or taking them away and I'm, I'm just liking it. Carry on, carry on, carry on, carry on. I don't know how personal this song is, but if you take the lyrics at their face value, like this is someone who's in a, a pretty good place. They're kind of at peace. And I love its position in the album because in the beginning, you know, we have that daughter song, which is very like angry, rageful. You have some really amazing features, but this song almost feels like it would even be a great last song. I mean, I don't know what's coming, but it feels like this like nice conclusion where I've been through all of these struggles. I've been through the 16 carriages, driving my dreams away, you know what I mean? But I'm here now and I'm at peace. I've been away okay, I love that. I feel like that song was so lyrically dense and so long. That was almost, that was like a whole story right there. I cannot comprehend the full meaning of that song right now. It is very late and that was a lot of words, but I love it. I love Two Hands to Heaven. Put it on the favorite list. Put it on the favorite list. I'm not gonna like be jamming out, but I feel like before I go to sleep, when I'm in the park, you know what I mean? Just like, and I just need to get my two hands to heaven. Sometimes you just need to get your two hands to heaven, people. A lot of y'all got your two hands to hell, okay? You nasty. Track 25, Tyrant. I don't know what this says. It's oh boy, Carter. Time to strike a match and light up this juke joint. One, one, one by one. Yeah, just yeah, just a hundred percent yes. Hangman, answer me now. You owe me a a country violin bass drop. What? <laughs> I ask again. What? What just? I need to go back. Sorry, y'all. I gotta go back. I envy you now. Just tell me how, tell me how. Bass actor could never. You get used to the haunting. Oof, I love the ways that she like changed. I know in most songs, the bridge is like a little something different, but she does it not just at the bridge. She really changes up these songs with like the pacing and the instrumentation like multiple times within the song. And it just makes it freaking interesting, people. Okay, damn, well, get off my missing the wanting. Wanting. Try to send me across the divide. Those, that falsetto, 
Wow, wow, wow. I have not heard as much of the falsetto. We've got a lot of the deeper register, but that falsetto was emotional for me. That was emotional. I, <laughs> Girl, me too. I also love to cry. You, man got that water. Don't act like you, you know what I want? I want those TikTok remix hoes to mix this part of Tyrant with water. The other water song by Tila which is like, make me sweat, make me hana. I feel like that and this part of this song would really go together. Hear the vision. Okay, yeah, Tyron's up there. Tyron might be in the top three, honestly. That was awesome. That was amazing. It kind of gave me a little bit of river dance in that we had that like more bass heavy um, instrumentation, but like we only got two songs left, y'all. I don't even know what to say. Track 26, Sweet Honey Bucket. This was one I said was gonna be good. In my mind, it was gonna be fast paced, but we just had a fast paced one and we haven't had that many like kind of faster back to back. So I could be wrong. It's five minutes long though, again. Damn, this girl. Uh, oh, featuring Shabuzi, forgot to say. One thing about Beyonce is she will give you a beat. No case the boots, change, here when I still I love a Shabuzi. Collab. I'm just, why isn't this happened before? When can it happen again? Feel like oh, yes, with the clapping though. Yes, with the clapping though. I love Shibuzi on this record. I mean, he's well known for like bridging country and hip hop together, but the way he and Beyonce vibe together, it's just like, it's, it just makes sense. It's one of those things where it just makes sense and the fact that it hasn't happened before makes you be like, why? Like, what what were we doing? I love this part of them together. I love the beat. I love the lyrics. I, it just, it's all working for me. This for my, this for my. Oh shit, is she about to switch up the beat again? And then she slows it down again. She speeds it up to slow it down. Bucket, bucket, bucket. Like a mechanical bull. <sighs> like a mechanical bull. Yes, girl. Okay, I love that song. That kind of reminded me of Yaya. -Ya. There wasn't as many genres in there, but I think it just reminded me of it in the way that she slowed everything down and then picked it back up and then slowed it down, picked it back up. And the fact that the Shibuzi feature was on, it was just like, there was so much happening in that song. I loved it, I respected it. I want more of it. Ladies and gentlemen, we're at the last song. We're at the last song. If you're still here, honestly, God bless you today. We're at 27, track 27. Beyonce, we are not worthy of the dinner you have served for us, but we will consume it. Amen. Last track. Mercy on me, baby, have mercy on me. Mercy, mercy. Hurting badly, I can see you hurting bad. Come at me with the melodies. Come at me with the harmonies. Come at me. Okay, I love that lyric. She says, I need to make you proud. Tell me, can you hear me now? It kind of feels like that could be to a dad, that could be to a parent, that could be to her fans, that could be to the whole country music industry in general, where she's just like, it wasn't good enough then, but tell me now, how do you like me now? This is a good last track. She knew what she was doing. She knew what she was doing. I still think Two Hands to Heaven could have worked, but I vibes with this too. Mercy on me, mercy <sighs> and the harmonies. God damn. She's trying to kill me. She's trying to kill me.
Wow. Y'all, color, color me shook here. Um, that was an enormous amount to take in. I'm honestly going to have to come back and like process everything. I want to read the lyrics over more. Because she told us a story. And it was a beautiful story, but there's just no way a human mind such as mine can take in so much information at once. I feel like I'm really going to have to go back and like sort through everything to see the beauty, the full beauty of the vision. Do you know what I mean? I feel like seeing this in concert, like front to back only would be, I mean, bury me now. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I can see, I can so clearly picture some of the songs that I would love to see her like visual interpretation of the songs. I wonder what songs are going to get music videos because I'm dying. Again, to see her visual interpretation. She's such a visual artist and she paints such a beautiful picture with the melody, with the harmony, with the instrumentation, with everything. So dying for that. Um, I had a lot of favorites. I have to go back up and look at my Spotify to figure out which ones are the favorites. Loved Sweet Honey Buckin, loved Tyrant, loved River Dance, loved Yaya, Levi's Jeans, Most Wanted, Spaghetti, Jolene, Bodyguard, My Rose. I mean, the whole album. Is it my favorite Beyonce album? Let's get controversial here for a moment. Honestly, it's hard to say. I can't, I cannot say that on first listen. I need to listen to it more. There's just too many things that slip through the little sponge holes in my brain, but it's up there. It's up there. Top three, a thousand percent confident can say top three. Um, honestly, this might be my favorite because when I think about what country music kind of did to her and how far, like how far she is into her career and just able to switch genres like this and just get everyone on board, it's just truly so so impressive like I'm just so impressed with her as an artist um, not even just the musician part of it but just like artist period very inspiring stuff like something for me something to aspire to for sure that level of creativity that level of adaptability um that level of versatility damn look at me with these utilities shit yeah I love that that was something special that was really special I feel emotional, honestly. It feels like that was an emotional, cathartic release for her. And it's kind of hitting me now also, like the cathartic, emotional release that just happened and like the amount of work and like the amount of self-belief that had to happen. So that honestly meant a lot to be able to listen to that. I think more so than other Beyonce records, like that felt, yeah, emotion. I don't know. I don't know what to say, y'all. Those are my thoughts. Thanks for sticking with me. I hope you love this album. Good night.